It's another beautiful Saturday afternoon and you're welcome to Captured by Women. This is a program where women discuss all the issues that have gone around in the news cycle for the week. My name is Nancy Vokania and I'm doing this today with my co-host. Amanda Clinton and you can find me on Instagram at Amanda Clinton Global. Before we carry on with the show, we would like to acknowledge our sponsors. We're shooting at the beautiful rooftop at Emerald Properties here in Cantonment, Accra. Would also like to acknowledge Woodin Le Createur. If you want to look smart and fashionable, visit any Woodin boutique nationwide today. Woodin offers an amazing collection of authentic African fabrics and ready to wear that come in beautiful designs and colors for men and women. With Woodin, you can get creative and versatile with your designs. Be confident and show off how truly African you are in Woodin. Go to a Woodin boutique near you today and choose from a variety of trendy products to complement your unique style. Follow Woodin Fashion on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Woodin Le Createur. In today's show, we will first of all be looking at Ghana's growing infamy as a haven of kidnapping. Okay, so during the week, you're all aware that several countries, among them the US, Canada, Australia, you know, have flagged Ghana as a high-risk travel destination for their citizens, owing to the increasing spate of kidnappings in the country. Well, we're going to examine the likely impact of this development on the country's reputation abroad. Many people have had several views, but we'll see. What do people really think of Ghana now? Now, some 62 students from Togolese and Nigerian origin were stopped from taking the basic education certificate examination in Ghana, although registered. At the same time, some 28 schools in Togo are alleged to be operating illegally by running GES curricula in their schools in Togo. The lead investigator will join us to reveal more details and you can't miss this. Now we will be taking a break soon, but before we go, I'd like to remind you that with Woodin, you can get creative and versatile designs with all your clothes. Be confident and show off how truly African you are in Woodin. Woodin, le créateur. We'll be right back with a spin. Don't go away. So welcome back from the break. And uh, before we went on the break, we were about to look at the spin. Um, Father's Day, Amanda. Yes. Why do you think that fathers are more celebrated than mothers? Um, or women are more celebrated than, than men. Than. <laughs> <laughs> I think obviously because perhaps women push. <laughs> and so they bear. That's such an old narrative. Yeah, well, I think yeah, it's I mean, true. But we should be over that by now. I think some fathers make a lot of effort. You know, but I think the generally is because fathers, you know, don't spend as much time with children as mothers do. So generally, you know, people are more attached to their moms, mm -hmm. you know, but I, for example, I'm very much a daddy's person. You know, I mean, I would do anything. I'm a mommy's dad. girl personally. Yeah? yeah. 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 But what do you think of Father's Day? I think fathers should be celebrated as much. Yes. I mean, we honor it. We buy a present. but. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, obviously most people connect to both their parents. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I think that most people um, have, you know, different stories in terms of the fact that they've had, you know, really sad experiences when it comes to their dads and how their dads maybe treated their moms mm -hmm. or how their dads treated them or how they were away most of the time. You know, I was speaking to a friend and said, you know, I mean, my father was around through video calling, you know, mm. and, and, and they would say, oh, you know, I love you, even though I'm not around, I, I still love you. And um, I'm working to provide, you know, so it's always that same narrative. But, but I, I don't know, what do you think fathers can do generally to change this? I, I think it's a do matter think of it communication. Yes, I think it's a matter of communication. I mean, if you go to one parent all the time because, you know, you have issues or you celebrate and you do different things, mm. And that's the go-to person or go-to parent that you naturally build more of a relationship with. with that person. I think that's what it's about. It's not really about, oh, because it's mum or dad. It's, a, it's about who you have that sort of, you know, that's the person you tell 
yeah. stuff too, basically. And normally, I think generally, parenting is looked as more of a woman's job, traditionally. In Ghana, perhaps. But I think that yeah. to change the narrative, I think that, you know, men have to do more in terms of spending time oh, with definitely. the family, with the children, you know, because you'd be surprised that, you know, the influences that children get mostly is from those that they spend um, the most time with at home. So mm -hmm. we're talking about but men maybe don't helps communicate at home. As maybe much. helps at home influence yeah. children a lot. Yeah. You'd be shocked that maybe a gardener or uh, what they normally call domestic help, whether a lady or a man, you know, do have a lot of influence over children mm -hmm. and not not the parents, you know, mm -hmm. necessarily. So yeah, I but I mean, Father's Day is very much celebrated in my house, and mm. it's a big Mine deal. Mine too. Mine too. Yeah, Absolutely. it's it's a big deal. Um, but I think just because people naturally go to their mother mm. for good times and bad times, and that's the person who communicates more. Not always. Yeah, well, traditionally, <laughs> and you know, for me. Um, yeah. So I think that is a big pull. Mm. But it's a great day to celebrate, and they, they should be yeah. grateful they even have a day. <laughs> they should be grateful they even have a day to celebrate. I don't think that's <laughs> fair. I mean, because my, my father's birthday is just three days after Father's Day, so it's always, you know, Mm -hmm. celebrate together as mm -hmm. one and um, and we celebrate him quite a bit I mean last year we had a huge party he turned 70 mm -hmm. so um, happy birthday dad by the way uh, happy birthday in advance mm -hmm. so and happy um, Father's Day to all the men yes absolutely <laughs> um, TV3 is uh, you know doing a few programs to mark the day um, there's going to be a luncheon at the old plaza hotel it's um, something that we're doing with uh, the mirror so um, it's it's going to cost not a small fortune, but um, mm -hmm. and it's this manageable. is on Sunday. Yes, this is it's tomorrow. on Sunday. It's a luncheon, yeah. so uh, you can take your father. You know, buy a few tickets, take your uncles, um, take your friends, and go have a lovely time uh, with 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 your father. Mm -hmm. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, and we hope that this narrative will definitely change. You know, with time. Yes, <laughs> men will be appreciated more. Yes, absolutely. So, folks, we've been discussing the importance of Father's Day and why fathers should be valued as much as mothers. Uh, we think that fathers should be valued as much as mothers. We think that Father's Day should get more attention than it's getting. And so we're hoping that we can all change the narrative and give fathers what they deserve. Um, we'll take a break soon, but before we go, uh, this program is brought to you by Emerald Properties and Woudine Le Créateur, and we will be right back. Now, some 62 students of Togolese and Nigerian descent have been prevented from taking the BECE exams this week. And their conduct has been described as unlawful. And people are questioning why non ghanaians are surreptitiously enrolling to this free SHS program. What potential threats do, does such enrollments bring? Now, we have been in, in, joined in the studio today by Charles Abagashi, um, who is the lead investigator, a freelance journalist from the Tiger Group. Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure our viewers want to know, before we go into BEC talk, why are you dressed like this? So, before I talk about that, I want to do a quick correction. I am not from the Tiger Group. Charles Amegashi is not from the Tiger Group. Okay. So, if the viewers want to know why I disguise myself, oh. probably it's because of how sensitive the issue is on ground. Oh. Yes. I wouldn't want to lose my life on the way because there is still a lot to uh, an act mm -hmm. for Ghanaians to know how illegally some people are looting money into their pocket at the detriment of our scarce resources that we have. So this free SHS program, um, it's free for Ghanaians and these students who enrolled have no previous um, background in terms of like being in school in Ghana and they came just to take this exam. How would you say this eats into the resources of Ghana? So, 
somewhere in 2016 when political parties were coming up with their campaign messages proud to the 2016 elections, the MPP government, which is currently in power, mm -hmm. they came up with a policy of free SHS. Mm -hmm. Now, before then, I have enough information that there are some schools in Togo that they found themselves in the Ghanaian educational system where they are not accredited to write basic education certificate examination. Mm -hmm. But these private individuals find their ways to Ghana after their students or pupils have reached JHS2 and then they need to write an examination to graduate. So they come here and look for private schools, speak with their proprietors, and then go into business with them. So you're saying they're not accredited, but just for instance, like if we were in a different country, if you go to America or you go to the UK and you've, you're just any student and you've just been there a while, I mean, surely you can just join the school and get free education. Why is that system where any nationality who is a child and wants to be educated can go to school for free? Why is that system different from ours? What's the distinction? So there is a great difference between that because you can also affirm that there are Nigerians in Ghana currently. Most of them are working here, they've settled down here mm -hmm. and they are in Ghana. Yes. So their awards are in Ghana. Yes. Naturally, they, Naturally they are in Ghana. They are schooling in Ghana and they have followed some curriculum activities. So there are records for a period of time. But this situation is a different one. These people are schooling in a different country. And when it is time to write exams, they get into Ghana, spend just a week, write their exams and go back. So you're, you're saying that, I mean, um, um, these students uh, are, are more or less important. Is this done on an individual basis or, you know, it's done, it's, it's, it's been it's organized, organized sort of like in a group thing where the schools are literally imported into Ghana, more or less like a whole class, like a year group is imported into Ghana with the consent of maybe some other group that's organized here to get them into the system. This is clearly uh, an attempt to get hooked onto the free SHS. So, so how is this done? How, in your investigations, what did you find out? Was, was it individually done or was it organized? So during our investigation, we discovered that over 28 schools, as at 2017, mm. which were existing in Togo, owned by Nigerians. The schools were owned by Nigeria. Exactly. Mm. Now, when these pupils are about to get to GSS2, mm. the owners of the school will cross over to Ghana, look out for private schools, and speak business with them. Mm. So, initially, the private owners, they have 30 or 40 students in Ghana here in mm -hmm. GHS3. Mm -hmm. They come and add up to that. So they can bring in like 50 students from Togo. So it's a group thing, it's not an individual. It's thing. not individual, it's more like organized crime, exactly. if you like. And exactly. would you say this sabotages the government's policy in terms of free SHS? Sure, and that was the main reason why we took the initiative to do this. Because we realized that even before the free SHS policy, mm. when these people come on board, after writing the BEC, automatically they are sent to schools in Ghana yeah. by the computerized placement system. Right. So if the free SHS policy is coming, it means automatically mm -hmm. foreigners are coming to enjoy our scarce resources. Okay, and as so we are talking, they are enjoying it. You did this in uh, 2017, which means that currently, in 2019, what's your estimation of the number of foreign students enjoying free SHS in Ghana? So as of 2016, we discovered that out of the 28 schools as at that time that we had, mm. on average, each of them provide 35 at least to schools in Ghana here. So if you should do your calculations do maths, work, yeah. you will have close to a thousand students trooping in as of 2017. And I can tell you of a fact that 
establishing a school is a business. The mm, population yeah, of increases every year. So currently, if not close many, to 2,000, because the schools are also increasing. So they're doing this in order to re-enter the Ghanaian school the system exactly. afterwards. The free SHS yeah, system. And the free SHS system. And is every student who is of age in Ghana who can go to you know, school um, able to write these exams and move forward? Meaning, are we taking away from a Ghanaian student's resources or does the government have to like provide more resources in order to accommodate mm. all these students? Well, that's, there was a time in Ghana where a lot of parents were agitating that the free SHS policy couldn't work because mm. students go to school and they say there are lack of beds, yeah. facilities. I can tell you that these are some of the reasons because if government should make provisions for a number of students because as such, I am very sure that government make long-term provisions because they deal with the registers of the various schools and they right. know by estimation that these are the number we of expect. students that will yeah. Yeah. get into the system. But within a twinkle of an eye, mm -hmm. you see that the population increases as against what government has planned. So yeah. by all means, there will be shortage in anyway, facilities. So, so you've done all of this work. Uh, I'm sure that it's cost you a pretty penny. Um, uh, you, you have to tell us if you were funded or not, or if you've done this you know, with your own resources. But then again, you have all of this information, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, with you. What are you doing with it? What do you think should be done about what you've discovered? So a lot of investments have gone into this. Now, when it has to do with what we did as a team after getting all this information, Maybe before you even tell us okay. um, uh, what you, you want to do with this information or what you think should be done, maybe you should tell us more about your process. What did you really go through and what did you discover, you know, aside from the 28 schools, what else did you find out with all this work that you put in? Okay, so I think for the process I withheld it because Mm. That is still the same process I'm going to use to get more information. Oh, you're still working on other things. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But to not be funded, I mean, I mean, it's 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 a wonderful thing to do. It's, it's a passion. It's, it's a, a passion, passion behind it. Mm. Okay. Because you know, sometimes I mean, playing devil's advocate a little, you know, <laughs> sometimes people wonder, um, you know, with an ass and with different people who do this wonderful human um, contribution mm -hmm. um, for society whether you're sponsored by foreign governments or is this an NGO effort somewhere and you know they need to use locals in order to make the program more authentic I mean is that true I mean would you say that perhaps foreigners are, fo are sponsoring these sort of projects initially I stated and I'm still with my word Mm. This was solely funded by myself and my team. Mm. We had no support from anywhere. Are you looking for support? Sure, if support comes, we will surely embrace it because things are becoming difficult mm. every day. And mm -hmm. I tell you, now that it is in the news, mm. we have to change our methodology because they will be on the alert that we will be coming for them. Mm -hmm. So methods have to change. So we really need support. But now that you disguise yourself, um, uh, you, of course, clearly no one can see who you are and um, no one really knows who you are at this point. How do you intend to put it out there? How do you intend to garner support and garner funding for what you're doing? Anyone who wishes to support, I think, can contact the producer of this program and okay. we'll make ourselves available. And I also think perhaps having a name, like for instance, at the beginning, we, oh, one of our producers researched and mistook you as being part of Tiger Eye, which you're not. Yes. So perhaps having a brand platform, even it if it's just help. a name, would help people at least direct, you know, resources as well to as attention mm. um, to this very honourable cause. Sure, we have a name, just that we've not put it out there. Put it out there. What's your name, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> <laughs> so Sablan. we can get it out there. No. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> anyway, so, so what do you intend to do with all of this? We have about five minutes. Uh, to you know, wrap up Three the minutes. segment. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> about that. Uh, our brand name is the Eagle. Okay, Eagle. The, Eagle. Yeah, the Eagle. The Eagle. The Eagle. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's the brand name. Okay. So when you ask, what do I intend to do with this? We yeah. have already started doing something with it. Okay. But 
the country we live in, I don't know why people want enough evidence. Mm. Yeah, it is true. You need enough evidence. This is quite clear. If you but ask when, me. when you are given a tip of the evidence, I believe you should support the person to get the enough evidence. Oh, so are you talking government? I'm, I'm, I'm just talking government. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what is the government doing? Have you tried to engage some, them? Somewhere in 2017, we, we tried engaging the Ministry of Education mm. because we thought it was that they, they, they were implementing the free SHS policy. So they were the best people to, to, act, to, to act, do something about it. But they didn't do anything about it. Mm. They didn't do anything about it. And it, it, it got to a time I visited some two, three media houses. You know, the media for the media, they need enough evidence because no one wants to put anything out there right. and it's going to be fake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they also never believed it until the heat came up on Monday when one of the headmasters w was arrested. Oh. That was when the media began to believe that, look, what this these is boys real, were doing. This is real, this is true. So the ego, I mean, this is one of, I hope, you know, many projects you're going to do in terms of social awareness. Um, did this story about the BEC, did it start with a personal story in terms of you saw something that you knew you needed to act? Um, or was it just How the random start, choice really? of mm. projects that you started with? Well, uh, the ego always had a passion to look out for something to work with in terms of investigation. Mm. So this was just like an opportunity to start from. Okay. So you're more or less uh, an investigative journalist type exactly. know, person. Exactly. And we look forward to your writings as yeah, well, because when you finish, you know, recording, etc., it's great to just, you know, mm. encapsulate this in some literature. Some sort of literature, yeah, yeah. So that people can share. But thank you so much for your time, Charles. Yeah. Um, the it's Eagle Productions, in terms of your adventure. I wish adventure. I could shake him. Yes, I wish I could shake your hand. I can't. <laughs> and we really do look forward to a lot more yeah. of your projects. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank mm. you too. So, if you've been following the news, there's been recent talk of kidnapping everywhere on the airwaves, on TV, in the mass media. And um, we're looking uh, today at the kidnapping cases and the way forward for Ghana in terms of reputation abroad. With us in studio today is ACP David Eklu. He is the Director General of the Public Affairs Directorate of the Ghana Police Service. You're welcome in studio and thank you for coming to Captured by Women. It's my pleasure being here again. Yes, um, ACP, we, we've, we've, we've heard a lot and we've, we've seen a lot and discussed a lot concerning the kidnapping situation in Ghana. Uh, most people have said that this is a new area in terms of uh, security and investigation you know, into cases and so on. So uh, most people shouldn't jump to conclusions uh, and, and jump to say that the Ghana Police Service is incapable or unable to work on these types of, of, of cases. Do you think that this is an entirely new area when it comes to security in Ghana? Um, thank you very much. And this happenings over the past few months or so uh, have raised a lot of concerns, yeah. have raised a lot of eyebrows because they have been extensively discussed in the media yes. by the public. Yes. But let me say that kidnapping is a criminal offense mm -hmm. and it is captured in our Criminal Offenses Act of 1960. It is the forceful or using force to imprison somebody against his will and trying to conceal that person from that person's relation, employers, etc. And the punishment, it is described as a second degree felony. Mm. And for that matter, the punishment is about 10 years wow. uh, or, or so. And, and can I ask, the Australian ambassador, UK ambassador and US in terms of they went on record, um, took the almost unprecedented step of late in terms of issuing to their nationals about, you know, safety in Ghana Travel and alerts. almost, mm. you know, raising the level of alert in, in Ghana when it comes to this sort of crime. Do you think they were justified or were they just being perhaps a bit too cautious? For us who have been monitoring the security situation within the sub-region and of course the world, 
Uh, I think it is just an update of the regular alerts regular they alerts. give to their citizens. But you say not because if, if you read Uber or taxis, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty big deal. Isn't uh, it? Yeah. Let me just come and say that it is, these are regular alerts. And if you even read the one that Australia issued, mm. they said their citizens should take the normal precautions they take at home when they come to Ghana. So it means that it is... precautions does not mean not getting into an Uber or a taxi, which is what was one of the recommendations. Hmm. That, is left to their, that is left to their own assessment of what they think. We cannot prescribe a mode of transport for anybody who is in Ghana, but there is also a common sense approach to using means of transport in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it is exceptional that they are issuing this alert because even if you are traveling outside this country, mm -hmm. The normal thing is that when you get to that country, you need to contact your embassy. They can they have to give yeah. you a security brief, especially when you are on official assess, assignment. And I believe that when you go, they tell you what the security situation is, areas that you cannot go, timings and all that. So it is it is and normal. And in this particular but, case, just about the motive, because you might have more knowledge about this case, was the motive for money or some other reasons? Was it organised? What happened in this particular case? Let's talk generally about kidnapping. Oh. Okay. This is not a new crime that has happened in yeah. this country. I said the offence is in our Criminal Offences Act yeah. of 1960. And we have had cases of kidnapping over the years, oh. except that the profile of those who are involved and the attention that the media has given it is not as we used to have. Yeah. But it appears that it is occurring uh, a little bit often for the past last year and this year. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if we talk about the motive, in Ghana, cases that we have handled are varied. The commonest one is the one for ransom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coco Pite had one fairly yes. recently, a horrific uh, case. Estonian... UK citizens, mm -hmm. female UK citizens. It wasn't citizens. kidnapping. It was no, sexual, but it's a it sexual was sexual assault. And it was also oh. money. They it had was, a lot of money on them as it, well. It was sexual assault and oh. robbery. So yeah. that is, that's a different... Uh, uh, type of crime when uh, you talk about yeah. the Kukubiti one. But, but the commonest one that we know of is for money uh. and people are targeted basically if it's a foreigner uh. it is because they want money. If it's a Ghanaian then you might want to look at the, the background of the person uh. where the person is working the family the person is coming from. So those people become soft targets. Uh. Another area of kidnapping that we have not spoken about a lot is what we call virtual kidnapping. Yes. Okay. Virtual kidnapping is a type of kidnapping where you don't physically imprison or seize the person, but they use mind games. Mind games. They use this sit yes. to call you that your relation so and so. whom you have not seen for years had been kidnapped. Mm. And they mimic your relation's voice. And it is a quick fix. So mm. the amount they call is not too uh, high. So it is something that they look at your second you know, maybe you can afford five thousand and people normally pay and the person and they go and then they cut off the line. It is re re later that you realize that the person, your, your relation after all had not been kidnapped is okay. Wow. So it is also common. I have handled about two or three cases that we have in Ghana. I'm so, so, Web, just to, just to say, I'm yeah. Ghana Web, a lot of people were saying after these girls were discovered in 48 hours and after UK and Canadian um, specialist operatives flew in mm. and I think, you know, are, are perhaps more familiar with kidnappings helped. A lot of people on Ghana Web said, oh, what happened to our girls in terms of the ones that were kidnapped, yeah. you know, has... Was the police perhaps t using this Canadians as high priority, or was the help that led the help from foreign operatives? Did this help in this case? Yeah, these are normal questions that people are asking. Yes. Mm. But I, I said, and we have indicated that the two incidents, the Takradi one and then the Kumasi one, look similar. It is the same, mm. but they are not the same. They are different. They are different mm. in terms of the timing, in terms of information that was available to the police, and then the information that we got from the public. For this Kumasi one, 80%, it, yes, 80 percent of the information we got were from the public. Because mm. immediately the crime happened, fortunately the driver who was carrying them and one other lady who was in the car made, made a report to the police. So okay. within minutes, mm. 
the police had that information. So and if you triggered... don't act within the first 48 hours, exactly. the it is critical. Of finding yeah. exactly. the last location. Yes. Yeah. So, so quickly, the, the local the police girls. mobilized the resources and then started work mm. before headquarters came in. And then other security agencies like the BNI and National Security came in. Mm. So it, it, was, it was information that got quickly to the police so and case, we started working on time it. Time is really of the essence. It's of essence. It's of essence. Okay, so, so do you have anything in your codes that says that you cannot report a person missing immediately, uh, you feel as if you know they've not shown up at home or so on and so forth. Is there a time uh, uh, set that, okay, you, you, you can't report somebody missing if the person has been gone for just a day, for example? No. Can you report that, immediately? Yes, but the best advice I can give to viewers is that it is better you report, you alert the police immediately. Right. If you find maybe your relation has... That's why in the advice that we are going to give, mm. please, if you are going out, let your family member, your, your colleague or something know where you are going and an estimate of the time that you are going to return. So if maybe after two hours lapse or three hours mm. and nothing happens and they are not able to establish contact with you, then the best option is to alert the police. It my, helps my, a lot. Or maybe to alert quickly the security agencies. My issue is with intelligence gathering and how it's treated here. You find out that even, I mean, today, most of the newspapers carried uh, this case with the Canadian girls. Uh, I mean, um, and, um, you know, the pictures were splashed in front of front pages and so on. And do you think that it is appropriate that at a certain stage in an investigation, information of this nature should be leaked to the media to put out there? Because, I mean, mind you that these guys that have been arrested are not guilty until they're proven guilty. Is it? That, that, so those are the challenges. Do you think it's appropriate that those, you know, unfortunately, this happens? Unfortunately, yeah. as a police communicator or security communicator, those are the challenges we face, especially with the advent of social media, mm. where people can take photos and circulate it right. uh, in a way without even thinking about the consequences. But if you look at the statement that we put out when these ladies were missing on the 6th of June, we cautioned media, we cautioned commentators and other people to be very circumspect in the way they discuss the issue and also how they use the images. It is inappropriate and it is wrong. We have even called some of the editors to tell them that, look, even circulating these pictures jeopardizes our investigation. Yeah. It is also sometimes um, it is also against the Data Protection Act to release personal details of somebody yeah. Yeah. without Absolutely. without yeah. going through the process. So yeah, because I, I feel as if that affects you know exposing. how everything yes, yeah. it was turns unnecessary. Out in the end. It doesn't help us in our investigation. Yeah. Anytime we would want the public to identify somebody, we would do it through the appropriate channels, yeah. official sources. Mm. That is done in a way that will not if Jeopardize. on the, the privacy yeah. and then the, the, the of the individual. So all those ones who, who did it, we have called some of them. Mm. Some of them pulled it out, but it, one social media, well, unfortunately, yeah. that's the aspect they, of social they, media. They, they get their hands on, on the Friends, information. Friends, people though. within the um, place the girls were staying. Mm. But just to ask some tough questions. I mean, <laughs> it seems towards the end, the roundup of, you know, after the girls had been discovered, mm. Minister of Information came out with a very strong mm. statement saying, yes, we did this in such a short time. Yeah. Government was very quick to sort of, you know, take uh, possession of, you know, of the victory. The, the victory. Mm. Um, why did the police hang back a bit, given that we think they did it, or, or perhaps was it the international help that helped? Hmm. What, what happened? Why was Is the police it, handi government, holding back? Government or the state has a responsibility of uh, all of us. Mm. Yes. And we work for the state. Mm. When the complaint was received and we started work, the second day we put out a statement yes. saying that these ladies have been reported kidnapped mm. and all that were looking for information. And finally, they have been rescued. Mm -hmm. And the, the minister, minister put out this information because linked to this kidnapping issue, there have been concerns about security in Ghana as a whole. Yeah. So it is within the remit of the Minister for Information to assure Ghanaians that this is Ghana what we is have done. Place. Exactly. Because so, a lot of so this it is not... But at the end of the day, the victory is for Ghanaians. The mm. victory is for the security agencies working with the support of the state. Mm. So it is not out of place for the Minister of Information to say, yeah. take the lead 
And after that, we have also spoken about it, reinforced what he has already said. Mm -hmm. And we've been working glove in hand with the ministry in terms of managing the information and so letting Ghanaians know what is happening. So it's not but, out of place. You know, Ghana, for years, I mean, absolutely years, has been known as practically, arguably, mm. the safest country in Africa in terms of, of the worst, yeah. de democratic, anywhere in Africa, democratic, you know, safe, etc. So do we really have to start managing how people perceive us as a country if, you know, there is this talk, well, Ghana is actually not as safe as we initially imagined? I mean, do you think we have to manage what people are saying about us outside? Yes, information management is key. Yeah. In managing people's expectations is also key. Yeah. And the level of information, the, the rate at which information travels these days is different from maybe oh, 10 absolutely. years back. Yeah. And with the twists that people add to it, it yeah. is something that we should be worried mm. about because it doesn't actually... Sensationalizing. Exactly. <laughs> and then it doesn't actually paint the picture that it, it, the reality. Yeah. Crime is, of course, becoming more complex. Crime is becoming more sophisticated, not only in Ghana, in, even in countries that are perceived to be safe. Mm. So it and is people a, are looking for money more. Yeah. Exactly. You know, they're becoming desperate. Yes, but it is so. not out of hand. Mm. It is not beyond our capabilities to manage it. That is the key thing that we are. There is a key message that we are sending but, but that it's not out of hand. But the fact also remains that the dynamics are different. So mm. the security consciousness of Ghanaians should be at least more higher than higher than. People we used to live in the past. Yeah, mm. we, we've been we, very we, relaxed. We, sh we, should, we should now yeah, work closely everything. with us. I'm talking about the security agency. Mm. This is the time that we need to carry along. That's why we, we any time, at every step, important mm. step, we tell you what is happening and what you should do, or Ghanaians should do, but so that we can we're all curious improve on to, to know. We're curious to know exactly what the Canadians did to support us in this effort. Because, I mean, it's been alleged, again, that the... The three girls that were kidnapped in Takradi are not even in Ghana and uh, in Nigeria. That's been alleged. I don't know. It's an how allegation. Far. Yes. So but that's, that's why alleged. investigation is work in progress. There are three yes. ladies that have got missing in Takradi. Mm. We have not finished that case yet. That case yet. So it is work in progress. So, so, so let's just say if, if, if it's, this is the case, if it is that they're actually in Nigeria, um, what do you think about international collaboration? See, let us not with speculate. Security? Let us not speculate mm. on this. Let us talk on facts. <laughs> yeah. So for now, we cannot say they are in country A, B, C, D. Mm. But two suspects are in custody now, okay. and they are helping us investigate. That is a fact that I can speak on. Okay, so we can, we can be sure of that fact that two people have been arrested. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And just because this has become quote-unquote a spate mm. in terms of you know kidnappings of different natures um, in terms of the motives of people um, will Ghana be receiving perhaps not I, I'm not I don't mean this in a patronizing way but will Ghana be receiving perhaps more training for how to deal with the crisis of kidnapping within the first 24 to 48 hours mm. yes yes and out of this unfortunate incident, yeah. we have learned lessons. Mm. So for now, a specialized unit at the CID headquarters on kidnapping has been set up. Oh. You remember some years back, we used to have this serial killing. Mm. Uh, yes, it, it I happened. Remember, yeah. I remember. It happened in isolated places. It took us some time before we realized that there was a trend. There was a signature. So a, a unit women was set. Against yeah. Women, yes, yeah. a unit yeah. was set, yeah. headed by the current Inspector General of Police, mm. to put all this together. Yeah. And then, at the end of the day, we got somebody arrested. So it is rather unfortunate, but there are good lessons that we have learned. Right. We are building local capacity in addition to uh, other countries that have experienced supporting, it so that we will be able to you. respond but to this. I, I just want to come back to the fact that, you know, it's been very controversial about the role of the Canadians in this particular rescue. And it'll be nice to know if, uh, exactly what kind of help they gave us in this instance. I think you, the Minister for Information made it clear. <laughs> that is at the state level. Okay. That they did not commit any assets okay. to this investigation. Mm. Human it, assets were committed. It can be both financial or uh, physical assets. Mm. Because there were even stories that they brought in some gadgets that were able to trace them. That is why he made it clear that they did well, not commit But human resources any, were brought in They, they did not project. commit any assets. But okay. what I know is that some came in, the first 
people who went to Kumasi are from the Canadian Embassy, mm. and they started working with the police in Kumasi. Okay. Did they but, fly but, people but, in but, for this? So, so but, this was did on they the fly level... people in for this, this operation? They did? I understand, yes. But those people are but, 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 kidnapping. Yes, but what I'm saying is that in terms Surely of the legwork, in terms of the legwork, in terms of information from the public, in terms of that the arrest and the police. rescue, was done by the police in close coordination with the other security agencies. Yes, because it's not to come, it's, mm. it's not to criticize the Ghanaian police, but it's to s highlight perhaps that perhaps if human resources in terms of people came in to aid, it would have been from the standpoint that in their country oh, they no. deal with this a lot. No, no, and no. So I they think that's true. Really there's, there's no I point. Think that they there's no their point. Citizens very if it was one Canadian, this would still happen. No, I know, I think but I'm saying they have their people no, involved. No, but I'm saying they were strategic they, they just had in to terms move. of it, knowing is it, at least, who to approach. Okay, I listened to some discussions on it, mm. and one person, I think he's a Canadian also, said that Canada has a strong social welfare towards its citizens. Yes, it does. So when cases happen like this, they want to follow up and find out what is happening. Not necessarily taking over the job of the local of police. Course. Yes. Mm -hmm. So to I, I, aid. yes, yes. To but aid. I have listened to. I don't know whether any Canadian official has officially spoken. But I don't know why this issue about committing, helping, and all that is but coming. We, we, but the minister is clear that mm -hmm. yes, there was no. They didn't commit any assets. But you don't so need to. This is. But no offense. This is a mm -hmm. an, an operation whereby someone who's familiar with kidnappings will say. It's actually the people, people closest to you. So either people they live with who worked at the building or it was the Uber driver which, or mm -hmm. someone close to you. So they're more strategic perhaps in knowing how to narrow down. We used force okay. to break into that building and rescue the ladies. Mm. And there was a grenade apparently. The, the people yes, had a grenade. Yes, and there were even some, some gunshots <laughs> yes, from the building. Yes, yes, we so the word rescue is more to us is appropriate it's, it's a but releasing to me my understanding is that there was some negotiation mm -hmm. then they handed them over to us yeah that did not happen we use force to rescue those ladies so that is our explanation and, and, and then they were grateful. handed over very great yeah. sure right. yeah i think i think i Kidnapped think you've done fantastic have been and, um, <laughs> and I, I kept saying this you know all along that you know i'm sure that the police are working and it's it's, it's very common for Ghanaians in general to stampede the police into doing what they're already doing, and and what do you th do you think do you think that uh, that's 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 been the trend? Do you think that we're always trying to push and stampede the police into you know committing themselves and and making statements that probably are just meant to offer hope per se? <laughs> we offer a public service, mm. and we expect feedback from the public. Mm to give us some insights as to whether the path that we are charting is it's right. straight or is not straight. Mm. Ghanaians by nature, even football, mm. if you lose a match, it means that the whole world, <laughs> if you all the players, that means that nobody kicked the ball. Yeah. That is how it happens. But we yeah. take it in good stride. Mm. But we think that when issues come up like that, let us work together. Mm. You don't leave it to the police. Police go and solve the problem. And, and, and things police like that. Police go and solve the problem. But you find out how are we going to handle this? How are we going to support you? A collaborative, mm. collaborative. effort. That is, that is the essence of modern policing. Mm. Yeah. And that is what we expect more from Ghanaians. Yes. But, but the, the feedback is good. The, the criticisms are mm. good. But some of them are way off. Of and I believe that track. some of you in the media are doing this program should moderate yeah. and then guide people to use language that will encourage us mm. not to demonize us. But be before we wrap <laughs> up, uh, we won't let you go until you tell us, you know, one or two things to do as citizens, just to, to be more alert, you know, of the security situation in the country and just to be more careful, you know, to assist with whistleblowing and so on and so forth. Just a bit of advice for our viewers in terms of security in general. Number one is that know your environment very well, mm. know your neighbors, and if you do a business that deals with a lot of cash, mm. keep a low profile. Mm. Plan your routes very well, and know when to contact the police as quickly as possible. Mm. If I quiz all of you here now and I ask about the police emergency numbers, I believe that... <laughs> I don't know why. You don't know, yeah. yeah so no, 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 it's, it's so the 191 serious. is now operational, fully operational. 191. Okay. And 18555. 
The US, you have that from here. 191 one, 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 and 1855. One, five. Five. These are, we have three 24 7 emergency command centers Great. in Accra, Kumasi, oh. and in Tamale. Okay. And we have about 15 call takers at a time taking calls from people. So please, if you find something that is out of the ordinary, contact us. The third one is that please take close note of things happening around you, descriptions, oh. car, their make, and beware of your timings. Mm. I think that is very don't important. There are, there, are, there, are, there are a range <laughs> of... Bank. Don't put it on mobile money. Yes. If you are. <laughs> mobile money. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So okay. invest in instruments that will not require that you carry bulk cash. Mm. Mm. There are a range of security tips that we put on our website on a daily basis. Mm. So visit our website, the Ghana Police website, and please follow us. And Interesting. don't just read, but try to implement them review them and they should become part of you mm. yeah thank you so much this has been very explosive thank you very much sir very for interesting and, and and we're so glad that you came um viewers we just had a discussion fruitful discussion with acp david eklu he is the director general of the public affairs directory of the ghana police service and uh, he's left one thing with us the security emergency numbers for the police 191 and 18555 191 so do place a call to the police and report anything that you think is suspicious we'll be right back the show continues Well, viewers, we hope you've had quite a bit of fun with us. Um, we're shooting our from studio. our open studio <laughs> from Emerald Properties. And uh, this program is also sponsored by Woodin Le Createur. It's Father's Day tomorrow, so do go to any of the Woodin shops and see if you can get a nice shirt for your dad to mark the day. And um, we're just wrapping up now. And then what was your high point, Amanda? Um, perhaps talking about the state of kidnappings mm. in Ghana and realizing that no, we don't actually have a crisis um, on our hands. It's just isolated cases mm. and perhaps because of, you know, media, you know, yeah. blowing it everywhere, it just seems a lot bigger than it is. But mm. I do think that, you know, people should be a bit more cautious in general. What stood out for me in today's show was um, mostly the issue of security. Um, mm -hmm. Looking at what happened with the BEC, um, issue where students from outside, you know, are lurching onto a free SHS program and um, also with the issue of kidnapping, you know, that has been going around in the news cycles. Um, uh, ACP, a clue, you know, gave us some tips today. So I'm hoping that we can all live by those tips and um, the security uh, emergency numbers for the Ghana Police Service, again, uh, 191 and 18555. So take note, 191 and one eight triple five and um, before we go would want to say a happy father's day to all fathers all around the world especially here in ghana so from the whole crew here and uh, from the whole of media general we're wishing a happy father's day to all fathers enjoy yourself tomorrow and uh, before we go again this program is sponsored by emerald properties and woodin le creator um, if you have anything you want to discuss with us or you want us to know about and discuss on the show you can reach me on instagram at nancy vuk you can also dm tv hashtag a DM, send a message on hashtag tv3gh on instagram or you can reach amanda clinton on Amanda Clinton Global. Amanda mm -hmm. Clinton Global on Instagram. So um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers and join us again next week for Captured by Women. <laughs>